first time, seven years, the Bank of Canada has increased rates. What was your take on what happened today and what the Bank of Canada had to say today? Well, not a big surprise. Uh, they've been busy prepping the markets that a rate hike is coming, and, uh, and they followed through with that. And uh, sifting through the monetary policy report that accompanied the statement today, the 30-page, not a lot of surprises. Uh, very bullish uh, in terms of the, the near-term outlook. Uh, you know, the, the, some of the data since the, the last update in April has been positive. They upgraded their growth forecast, a couple of ticks for this year to 2.8%, which is in line with, with our view. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the risks, though, they downplayed a bit, um, you know, and again, they've been communicating this through the media is that, for instance, U.S. policy uncertainty, something they really hung their hats on. Some of the delays in getting policy done makes them feel a little bit better about some of the potential downside risks on the economy from some of the, the negative trade related and that kind of, they downplayed that a bit. So that's a tick in the why they hiked rates. The big thing that we, we learned is why they think inflation's going to tick up, because that's really the, the missing piece. Inflation's been low, and they spent a fair amount of time and coverage today for, to why inflation will tick up. It's not just because of the growth outlook, it's because they look at four or five items that they feel will be temporary in terms of their downward pull. Things like auto prices, they see those turning around. Mm -hmm. Gasoline prices earlier this year, been pulling down inflation. Electricity rebates in Ontario. Uh, so they had uh, a few reasons there why they feel inflation will begin to grind higher. Because I think when we look at the outlook for Canada, I think there's concern about whether inflation will move back up to the Bank of Canada's target of 2%. The, uh, the reaction, the loonie, was quite profound this morning, actually, uh, trading over uh, 78 cents. And is that, kinda, is that because of what you're just saying here? Is the bank saying this inflation issue is temporary, therefore, is the, is the interpretation of that that more rate hikes are coming? Yeah, I think the tone. The tone is, is, is quite positive in, in the report. The press conference right after, quite positive. So I think the bank of uh, investors are certainly expecting another follow-up rate hike uh, in October. There's pretty much a full quarter point priced in. I would agree with that. I think it will happen. There's still debate about what happens beyond October. I think the thinking there is that the Bank of Canada cut rates by 50 basis points in 2015 as an emergency measure given the oil price shock. That's no longer needed. Uh, the governor once again indicated that today in the press conference. So hence a follow-up move would be likely that would reverse the 50 basis points. The market's still wondering a bit about some of the risks on inflation. So for example, uh, the uh, next April, which is when we think that the Bank of Canada will next hike, the market's thinking a 50-50 probability. So, that, so ultimately the bank says it's data dependent, it's decisions, so that sort of leaves room for ongoing debate as to what's going to happen. Any commentary from the bank today on housing? I mean, that seems to be uh, our nationwide obsession right now. Um, any commentary in terms of what they think this impact will have on, or this rate hike will have on housing? Yeah, not really. It, it is cited as a risk. Again, he emphasized macro prudential factors that have been put in place uh, and along with the rate hike is going to bring down housing activity in an orderly way probably not affecting the very near-term outlook but it's a, it's a reason why growth will moderate uh, and remain close to the closer to the sustainable rate of around uh, you know one and a half or maybe one and three quarters next year they emphasize that it, it's a risk they're going to monitor ultimately it comes back to even inflation, that we're going to have to dig further into this subject. There's still a lot we don't understand why global inflation has been surprisingly low. Um, so they don't, they don't uh, confess that they have the answers to all these questions. And housing is something they're going to have to watch. Higher interest rates and how that will affect housing demand. So based on their, uh, on, uh, on their forecast, it's very much in line with ours, that housing will moderate in an orderly way, not dragging down the economy too abruptly. Uh, and same thing with household debt. It's something he feels this is a good thing. Higher rates will help to mitigate, mitigate some of the risks in household indebtedness. And, but it's something they will be watching very carefully. Let me ask you about um, just, uh, you know, I guess moving in lockstep with some of the other central banks, notably the Fed at the same time. Some people saying, well, you know, they're doing this to manage, you know, interest rate differentials or make sure they're working in the same direction as the Fed. Any thoughts around that? You know, there wasn't any. Uh, in the press conference, uh, it was still going on when, uh, as we, we speak, but uh, there wasn't any questions directly related to external developments, uh, you know, or whether this was timed ahead of the Fed, the next rate hike. Uh, you know, the way they, they uh, sort of discussed it was simply that looking at the data, it was time. It's no longer 
time for the economy to need such low interest rates. A little bit of tightening is, is, is important to keeping growth on a sustainable track long term and as inflation grinds higher. So it's, it could be very speculative, but it is a, a global story right now. ECB has been communicating that emergency rates are no longer required, levels of stimulus. So Canada is just joining the chorus, but they're the first to move uh, above and beyond the Fed. Derek, thanks very much. Thanks, Jeff.